Hey guys, today I'm going to paint up this little guy right here with India inks and pastel pencil. So this will be a review of sorts of Timothy Smith's India ink mixtures and pastel and kind of just a brief overview of the process it goes through. A little bit different because, you know, and I'm making this kind of run through this really fast. Um, and I'll leave you guys links down below and I'll give you some more information and thoughts about this stuff as we go along about it. Anyway, let's roll. Anyway, I started out by, I went over to Pixabay and I picked up this stone gargoyle picture and I'm not going to copy it exactly. And so basically I cut it out and put a little of that indie ink mixture on the outside. And then I'm going to come in, I use some golden high flow, fluid acrylics, um, and put some white in the spots that I felt like need to be brighter. So I just kind of freehand, I didn't make any marks on my canvas. So, um, you know, just found the areas I thought were going to need to be a little bit brighter and put it in there. On hindsight, I would have gone a little bit lighter than what I did. All right, for those of you looking for this to be a little bit of a tutorial, what I did is I cut out different sections, made myself basically a stencil out of this paper, and that way I could work on it. So I'm going to cut out the sections around, like the arms and the darker spots. And I'm going to come in here and I start out and I use the lightest mixture and I will spray through all the spots that are going to get filled in. And that gives me a basically a stencil shape of sort when I get done with that. By starting with the light mixture, you can start getting all your base layers in and you don't have to worry too much about making much of a mistake. You're going to work really, really slowly. You can work this stuff at very low pressure and there's like zero. There's no tip dry with this stuff whatsoever. So I had my light mixture in there. You can see I took and I splattered a little bit of paint. Then I turned the pressure down just as low as I can. I mean, literally, this is about two PSI to be able to get a little bit of a stippling in there to give a little bit of texture and turn that way down because I wanted it to have a little bit of that rough look. And then, of course, I blew out little spots on there. And I know those look like they're way too far out there, but they're actually, I could use a lot more. Then I took a texture stencil and I blew in just a little bit more spots here and there just to create a little bit of texture. Believe me when I say these will be almost invisible when they get done. They're just some minor texture layers. Uh, they look very dark right now, but it is not very dark at all. So instead of just using a smooth freehand shield, I am using my texture shield for my free for a freehand shield on the edges because I don't want it to be really, really smooth. And that allows it to create just a little bit of rough edges in there because, you know, I want those edges to be rough and not crisp and sharp. Continue to work my light mixture through there. I will start bringing in little, uh, you know, wrinkles and things like that off of the eye. All right, so this is the Canson color line pebble gray paper, which is what Tim works on all the time. And uh, I actually got all of this stuff from Tim. And next, I want to show you that you can actually do some erasing. So after I got done with my first layer, I'm going to go ahead and do just a little bit of erasing for a little bit of texture. And that texture will stay through because inks are transparent, so they build on top of each other. So you'll see you are able to erase the inks off of that color line paper. Now you do want to be careful and not to completely oversaturate. So you don't want to just hold the tr trigger down in one place um, because it is a moisture getting on a paper surface if you're working on paper like that. And then I'm going to, if you guys have watched my freehand techniques, I'll throw a card up there. If you haven't seen my freehand techniques, I'm going to use a little bit of freehand techniques for texture around that nose and put some of that texture in there with freehand. So if you cut up your, you know, picture like I did, you're going to find you're going to be able to use these as, uh, you know, little freehand shields and you'll be able to crisp up lines on the edge with your little papers that go everywhere. Maybe the trash, maybe. All right, so as you see, I use that. I'm going to use my paper cut you know, stencil, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to use that as a shield. And that's kind of important um, so that I can hit it more than one time. And it's just important to kind of go through. You don't want to try to hit it all, blast it all in one spot, take multiple passes. And that's quite all right. And build your color up, or in this case, build your ink up 
to the values that you need. Um, however, we're still working with the medium texture, so we're not going to hit our ultimate value. Um, we're going to hit everywhere that's going to be darker and, you know, the spots that need to be a medium, but we're not going to hit everything that is going to be lighter. Um, so as you progress, you will use less ink and get into more of the details as you get into the darker mixtures. All right, so now we're going to use the dark mixture. And of course, what are we going to do with the dark mixture? We are going to put in the darkest darks that we can and get into all the areas. Of course, you'll still be able to blend out so you don't have to hit it all in one stroke, which is really important to remember in this method that you're not trying to hit it all in one shot. You're going to, you know, continue to build up and you will continue to build up darkness as you move along. All right, so once you get done putting your darker mixtures in there, and you still got room to play from here, uh, now is at this point is which you would want to start bringing all your highlights in, which in this particular technique, we use pastel pencils, um, which I also got from Tim. And so you can do multiple techniques with it. The cool, really cool thing is how well they lay on top of the ink and how they are able to work with multiple different uh, methods. You can erase them back off. You can take a paper towel and spread them out, make them blend out. I use my fingers. Uh, Tim would probably smack me and tell me that's the wrong way, but I use my fingers to kind of scrub some pastels playing around with this stuff. And you can take a brush and kind of, you know, soften it if you would like to. And of course, you can completely remove it should you put pastels somewhere you don't want. Anyway, I'll show you a quick process of that and I'll see you guys in a minute. Yep, and this is my first time, you know, combining pastels with any ink. So, you know, I got in here, I played a little bit. As you can see, it purely rubs in really easy. And you can see me playing around with a brush, um, trying different techniques. So that brush would just soften it. Uh, paper towel will soften it. Pencil eraser will pull it back off. You can use a kneaded eraser on it. And so I'm just coming in and hitting my lights because um, I wanted the light to come in a little bit different than what was in the reference photo. And, you know, like I said, I wasn't perfect this was a, a quicker piece and just you know just wanted to use it as a test piece and thought it turned out as something you know it's pretty cool it's not uh, super detailed but you know it's still a pretty cool piece but as you can see how easy that pastel is layout and as I get too much pastel on there boom softened right up and I could remove it with an eraser it comes right off All right, guys, so, yeah, so that's a little painting I painted up. Um, really cool stuff. Um, really cool. One of the things really cool about it is how free it is to, you know, basically you just have eraser, pencil, you know, your pastel, and three bottles. That's it. Um, you know, compared to my normal everyday work, which is, you know, at any given time, I got more, I got way more paint out than this right now. And, uh. So it's very, very, very simple. And there is zero, I mean, zero tip dry, cleans right out with water. This is a very beginner friendly way to work. Um, I use my, well, I use my Eclipse to spray in the white, but uh, I use my GSI Creos, which is a 0.2 needle and nozzle combination throughout this whole thing. I have my regulator, which is right here. It's set at, uh, 15 PSI and I even have the Mac valve turned down from there in most of this painting. I literally was painting at like 5 and 8 PSI. Of course, that's partial part of that is that brush works really well like that. Um, so anyway, I hope you guys got something out of it. I'm going to leave you links for Tim's YouTube channel because he does this all the time. And I will leave you a link to his webpage where you can get his inks. I'm not making anything out of it. Tim didn't ask me to do this, just straight up honesty. I did this just because I did. I ordered these for myself. I paid for them with my own money. And, you know, he sent me the box out like the next day. It got shipped out, sent to me. I think I paid for, and I bought a lot more ink than just that. It, I think I spent about $30, you know, for inks, you know, a pastel pencil, you know, and he sent me an eraser and yeah. Would I work with this way all the time? Well, no, because, you know, they wouldn't be suitable for this work that I do. This is what I get paid to do. So it wouldn't be suitable for that, but it is a different method. And I plan on doing a whole bunch of ink drawings. I'm going to do about 20 of these with inks. I had that in mind when I bought this. 
that I was going to do a bunch of ink paintings and those are going to go up as prints and for sale. Um, but anyway, guys, if you like the video, you know what to do. You know where the subscribe button is and you got to ring on that notification bell. I'm not going to ramble no more. I'm going to get out of here. Y'all have a good one. We appreciate you.